Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect. I hope you're doing amazing. So you might hate me for this video, but I wanted to create a short video just to remind you that sometimes we just need to be practical. So the backstory is I posted a little bit of promotional post, you know, promoting my latest video on matching the background with that of the composite by painting the light. Here in this, if you have a look at the post, it is a GIF. Right. And a lot of you in the comments asked me that how did you create that GIF and you wanted a tutorial on that, which is great. I loved your idea and that's why I'm creating this video. A lot of you suggested that keyframe animation, you can just do it in Premiere, Photoshop. That is all amazing and might give you amazing results. And we even have a video on how to make animated GIFs or GIFs, however you pronounce it, in Photoshop right here. You can watch it. But for something as simple as a simple before and after, would you have to do the whole thing in Photoshop? By the way, can Photoshop do it? Of course Photoshop can do it. But if you want to create it in Photoshop, you would have to just import both of them, maybe just create a timeline, maybe add fade. Photoshop is a little bit slower with that of uh, uh, movie animation and movie editing and all of that stuff. It's not really good and plus the exporting might take a little more time. It's all cumbersome. It just make more sense, makes more sense to be a little more practical and just go to Google and type in animated GIF generator, something like that. And I'm sure there would be links that can help you. So click on any one of these. So I'm going to click on the first one. That's how I did it. And all you got to do is to choose the files. So right here I have the before and after. So let's select both of them and click on open and it will automatically be uploaded. Just click on upload and make a GIF. And you will be surprised by these websites that give you a lot more control and ease to making a GIF. So right now we have two of them uploaded. Now you can change the order by just dragging it. So first we want the before, then the after. Now you can have a lot of images right here. I don't know the limit, but you can choose from which image to which image, the absolute range right here. We want both the images right here. So one to five or it doesn't make sense. We want both the images. All right. Now let's click on make a GIF. Let's see what it does. Have a look at the cute little cat. Did you notice that? All right. So this is what we don't want. This is a very fast transition. Plus there's no fade in between. So we want a little bit of fade. So click on cross fade frames and then how many frames you want in the fading process. So how smooth you want the fading process to be. So I'm going to choose the maximum number and how much delay will be between each frame. So I want zero delays. So let's keep it one minimum and hit enter or click on make a GIF. Look at the cute cat. Isn't that wonderful? And let's see how it turns out right now. It's way easier than Photoshop than trying to just import both the images, get it down onto the timeline, trying to add an opacity, how the opacity fades in and all of that fancy stuff. And the greatest part is once it's processed, have a look at this. See how easy that was, how easy it is. But right now, we want it to stay on one image for a while, right? We want it to stay on one image for a while and then fade it to the other one. So we want a little bit of delay so we can just increase the delay. Keep in mind, these numbers are one hundredth of a second. So if we select something like 80 or 90 and just hit enter, that's all you got to do. Hit enter. And now you have it. It'll stay on a frame for a while and then move to that. It'll stay on that and then move to the previous one. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is a great GIF. You can just download it right here, export it. However, there's one more problem. In Photoshop, you might say, hey, but how do I crop it? But how do I resize it? You can do it all in websites like these. So in YouTube, it would be best if you just upload in the community tab if it's square so it won't crop the additional area. Sometimes it does crop. If you're worried about that, you can always just click on crop right here. And that's pretty much it. So the maximum height right here, if you want to keep it 600, you can also keep the width to be 600 as well. And you can just uh, resize it that way. Or you want to keep it maximum. Let's just get it to the max right here. So the max height is 800. So let's set the width to 800 as well. There you are set. And then you can arrange it to your choice. So I'm going to keep it a little bit to the left a little bit to the right, just arrange it the way you want it to be arranged. And once it's done, just click on crop image. Look at the cute cat right there. And there you have it. If you want to resize it right now, the size is 16.5 megabytes. If you want to just optimize it, resize it, you can do that as well. So if you want to make the GIF smaller, there are ways just click on optimize. And then how do you want to optimize it? You want to just you can resize it very simple or you could do some color redu reduction or you can just do lossy GIF 
and then you can just increase how much you want to um, do the compression so let's try 100 i want to bring it under 10 mb and click on optimize now this uh, lowers the quality just a little bit if you can live with that but right now if you look at the size it's reduced to six so this is a little experimental you can try 100 a value of 100 reduce the value see what size works for you and once you're happy with whatever that is just click on save and it gives you an animated gif with no watermark isn't that amazing let's click on save and there you have it. There you have your GIF downloaded. Now, there might be a lot of buttons and a lot of settings right there, which might differ from website to website. But the best way to learn this or learn anything in the world is just type in random numbers and just create a GIF, see how the results are and do some trial and errors yourself. Do a little bit of experimentation. So is Photoshop bad? Should you always use this technique? Hell no. For simple stuff like that, it just makes sense to use something like this as fast, just upload them, just download the GIF and you're pretty much done. Unless of course somebody is paranoid about privacy, but then again, if you're just concerned about privacy, why would you create a GIF and post it on the internet? Right? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, so when to use Photoshop? Well, if you're doing something complicated, for instance, just a smoke, a very complicated animated smoke coming out of the hot coffee cup like we did in this video, then you might want to use Photoshop. If somebody is running and you want to create a con continuous loop, you might want to use Photoshop or even some advanced photo uh, video editing applications like Premiere Pro. For simple things like this, just we need to be a little more practical. Please don't be embarrassed of using tools like Canva. It's absolutely fine. If something is working for you, that is the best tool or the best software for you. I hope this video helped a little bit and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.